is Andrea Versen, chef, executive chef at the Paso Terra restaurant in uh, Paso Robles. Um, I would like to start a series of cooking class starting from the very beginning where we are going to talk today about knives. Like I used to teach in Los Angeles in a different cooking uh, school that I used to work. And um, pretty much uh, the most of you are kind of confused about the type of knife to use. Uh, in the kitchen I am using actually this one here, which is called the chef knife. And then there is a paring knife. And to make things easier, I use the serrated knife as well. Now, you will notice I have a two chef knife over here. Now, the difference is basically the difference in price. You can buy a Cadillac versus a Pinto. Then, here is the Cadillac of the knives. This is called a forged knife. A forged knife is made from a steel bar that is heated and panned down until we get the, the shape. Is, is it done, uh, it's done really either way by hand or uh, with a machine. Now you can see the structure right here, as thick it is, it's kind of comfortable for, the, for the, the handle and how to manipulate the knife. Now, this other knife over here is called a stamp knife. You see the difference here in the thickness of, between the two. This one is actually stamped from a metal sheet and what they do, uh, they just add a handle on it and of course they sharpen the blade until the desired uh, function and size they, they decide to, to they need. Now, another knife I have is a serrated knife. Serrated knife I use for tomato, eggplant, fruit or vegetable with a hard uh, shell or uh, even peel. And then we have the peri knife. Peri knife uh, is my second best used knife in the kitchen because I can do all kind of detail. I can core, I can peel vegetable, I can dice little like a piece of garlic. I can do that instead of taking a big knife. And um, of course we have a different type of uh, a paring knife, but that's your choice. Now, a knife should be feeling comfortable, uh, balance in your hand, you feel comfortable before you buy a knife, if you can actually handle the knife. Uh, you can do the, you know, I feel this one is kind of light. This one is really nice and uh, for me to, to do shopping of uh, parsley, for instance, it has a proper weight and I like that, you know. Then also, the knife has to have this, uh, this kind of round shape. That is to do what I call the swing. See, when you shop, it's a swing. He replaced this old-fashioned uh, knife from my grandmother that was with a 200 and you rotate that way. I have a couple of those, but I don't want to confuse you. But this is the idea of the chef knife right here. Now, uh, you are going to ask how do you um, uh, use a steel to sharpen the knife. Then, the way I do it is a heel of the knife to point. Heel to toe, heel to toe. You keep the knife 45 degrees angle and you go under like this and this way until you readjust the line of the knife straight to help you to, to, uh, to do a better job. Anyway, then the first part of our, of our cooking class uh, today would be to deal with vegetables. Hello, here again, Chef Andre, to make a demonstration about how to dice an onion. Now, before we start, I want to point out to you a few safety rules about using a knife. When you use a knife, when you finish a job, you should put the knife back away from you, uh, with a blade uh, far away from you. Now, you never put a knife on the towel, or you don't put a knife under the towel because you don't see it. Now, you don't put a knife on the edge of the table. If for any reason your knife was going to fall, just let it go. Go away from the knife. Just don't try to catch it, okay? That's really important. Now, another thing is, 
if you are washing a knife um, and you are in the situation of a professional kitchen like this, you wash the knife, you take care of it right away and you put it away right away. Don't leave the knife in the water where someone else doesn't know there is a knife in the bottom, then you need to be safe all the time. And when you carry a knife, don't carry a knife like this in the kitchen. You carry a knife with the blade down and the blade back. See, very important that you're doing this, okay? Um, pretty much that's what you need to know about the knife. And of course, when you use a knife, it should be clean all the time. Uh, I try to avoid to use the, the, the dishwasher because the temperature could crack the end on. That's another rule, okay? Now, we are going to peel an onion. Now, I saw some people cutting the onion like right here. No, no, no. You just cut off a little bit of the, the back of the roots, and this is here where the, the flower usually comes out, okay? And uh, you will hear me talking about those two, uh, two parts of the onions when I'm going to chop it, okay? Then, I peel the onion right here, and uh, of course, when you work on the station, you need to keep your uh, your station can clean all the time, not to have a mess. Okay, now, right here, I am going to slice the onion from the top to the bottom of the, of the onions. Now, this is where the roots are, is. And if you see all this part here, it's all loose. Then, I am going to use the root as a, a, a part of the onion that is good to keep all, all everything together. Now, I am going to slice into the onion down, but not all the way to the end. You see what I mean? Just like that, slowly. All right, for you to understand, of course, the sharpness of the knife makes your job much easier. Now, you see how many slices I did over here, and the onion is still together, but I slice all the way down. Now, I am going to count on the edge of the table here, I'm going to, don't put your finger behind the blade, or under the blade, that's under the blade, that's under the blade, that's under the blade. Don't put your finger where the blade is going to cut you, okay? Now, I try to cut as many, as many times I can before the onion is going to fall apart. Here I can do just three, all right? Now I take the onion, it's still holding together. Now. The, the part that is important, thinner, more slice you can do in the onion, finer your onion will be chopped. See? Then now, I'm going to hold the onion, and I'm going to just cut slowly like this, in this manner, until I reach the end part of the, the, the part of the onion that is holding uh, the whole thing together is not even sliced. You see this, I don't throw it away. I still keep it. And what I do, I do the same thing that uh, if it was like a brand new onion, I slice it, cut it this way, and then I, I slice it all the way to the end right here. I use every part of it. Now, to finish the job, I put my finger on the top here, okay? And not pinky here, Okay, this is no good. And we are going to do the swing to can of chop the onion all the way until we reach the size, the desired size. Okay, all right, then here we go. That's all it's about. This is a continuation about the onion cut. Now, when I am finished with the uh, the onion, I don't want to use the blade because I may cut myself. I use uh, one of those uh, metal scraper. It's so much easier to get the onions into a bowl. Now, I want to talk to you also about how to hold your knife and what you need to do. I have saw some people doing this. Well, this, what it does, it restricts your motion about feeling kind of loose with your knife. See what I mean? This is too rigid. You cannot do too much. Here, the, the action comes from the, the, uh, the wrist. It doesn't come from the elbow or the shoulder. It comes from the wrist. Very relaxed, very relaxed, you will see. 
Now, I'm going to show you the way I do an onion at my regular speed, okay? Come closer here. Let's start. Okay, now, if I was having two knives, I could do with two knives, but so far, let's do very simply. It's very important for you to see the motion of my wrist right here. It's very relaxed. Just use the weight of the knife to chop, okay? Now, uh, another thing I would like to, to mention to you, when you start to use a chef knife, there is a, a different set of muscles that really you need to develop into your uh, into your wrist, into your left hand, if you are left-handed. Okay, now, what I would like to show you is what's happening with, uh, with my hand right here. This is what I call the tiger claw, where I, I put my finger in, not sticking out. I don't do sticking out, I keep my finger in. This particular, a uh, finger right here is my guide, is my guide. And the blade should never come toward your finger. It should be all the time away from your fingers. I exaggerate, but pretty much this is a safe, a safety procedure that I'm doing. Now, I'm going to just slice the onion right here, okay? What's happening is my finger, the thumb, the thumb right here is pushing and feeding, feeding right here. See what I mean? It's like the thumb here is pushing toward the feeding where the blade is going to cut. See, all like this is all a motion. Then you need to develop here a little more of stress, strength, I would say, but also the stress, because this is not a normal position. See, that's really pretty much what it is. You feed into the into the onions like this, okay? Then, I'm going to show you again. You're going to see exactly what's happening. The blade is not moving. The blade stay in the same place, okay? All right? Then, what I'm doing here, I'm feeding, okay? See, and this particular finger is my guide. This happens when you have done so many years of uh, practice, you know? All right, this is how to slice an onion, pretty much, uh, to do candy onions, or using onion in a salad, or whatever. All right. Hello again, this is Chef Andre, continuing with a knife skill. Uh, this particular section is going to be about uh, uh, cutting some batonnets and julienne, which are kind of uh, things that uh, people don't, don't know, but it's not important. It's like how to make french fries with a knife. Anyway, now, before, before I peel the potato, I wash the potato. In this way, I don't get my board dirty. Then, the, the desire to use uh, one or the other here. Uh, I use this one for long vegetable. You know, it looks very well. Like if you were going sometimes to peel asparagus because there's too much fiber. Or this one here actually for a smaller vegetable, but it does the job as well. Um, see, peel off, he has a stronger blade, I feel. Nice. Um, when you peel the potato, don't leave any, any black spot. Um, then here we go. 
And uh, if you have a dark spot like here, you just peel it off until it disappears. All right, there we go. Nice, 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 nice. Now, uh, when you peel the potato, for instance, avoid to drop uh, the peeling on the floor because this is a most dangerous uh, situation where you can slide on it, it's very easy to do. Then uh, please be, be careful always. Uh, now, uh, I clean up my table right here. And uh, we are going to be ready to dice, uh, not, not to dice, to make, first of all, uh, sticks. I'm going to kind of cut the end like this to make a square. Now, the potato is round. I need to stabilize the potato uh, into um, a, a part that uh, maybe I can take even the peeler and, and make it really flat. This way it doesn't bounce anymore, see? Now, the key here is to um, slice uh, the potato into similar slice, okay? Uh, that would be for doing um, French fries. Now, this particular situation here applied to all kinds of solid vegetables like turnips, carrots, uh, I don't know, like uh, sweet potato. Then um, all these, these are called batonnets. That's the style of French fries right here. Yeah? See? Now, if I had to do dice for any kind of raison to make a, a potato soup, you know, using garnish, then here, these are the dice, okay? Then we have the, the batonnet, we have the dice. Of course, the dice, you decide uh, following the recipe that you are, you are following that uh, the size could change from uh, very small like a brunoise. Brunoise is very tiny. Uh, now, I want to show you here um, how to do a julienne. A julienne is more like a, the straw, the straw fries, the straw. I cut the, the thin, very thin, see? Very thin. And uh, I have to do a little bit at a time. Um, let's see, I'm going to go this way. Well, I'm going to really cut very small. All the time, if you want to do a very good job about doing so thin, think about the size of one, one piece of your hair. In this way, the focus will be very small and you will be successful about accomplishing and achieving this particular cut, okay? All right, okay? Then, so far, here we are. This is Julian, Dice, and Batonet. I would like to introduce you to the word mirepoix. Mirepoix is a combination of three vegetables. They are called aromatics, and aromatics are used for giving flavor to whatever we do. It could be a chicken stock, a roast, um, it could be part of um, actually uh, casserole is to give a flavor. Now, uh, I will use uh, for the mirepoix, the ratio is two parts of onions, one part of celery, and, and uh, one part of carrot. And uh, that is pretty much the ratio that we are looking for. Now, the size of the mirepoix depending on what you're making. If I am making uh, roasting bones for a, a, a dark sauce, a dark stock, uh, I will use a bigger dice because they are going to cook for so long. I don't need them to, to be so small. They need to exchange the flavor. It will take a time. Then, right uh, here, what I'm doing now, um, I want to uh, cut the carrot this way in, in dice and pretty much the dice when you decide 
on one particular size, try to keep with the size itself, okay? All right, that's pretty much uh, the consistency right here I want to have um, and the size for making uh, maybe a lamb stew or so. Then I will take a celery and the celery will be about the same size dice, okay? Like this, all right, this is about uh, at least a good half an inch for this particular demonstration, all right? This here, yeah. all right, one, one um, volume of uh, of celery, one volume of carrot, and uh, I will do uh, two volume of uh, onions, which is bigger, bigger dice. This is the same idea of what we have done before, except we are not going to chop it up all the way down, just in chunk, okay? Uh, that's pretty much the dice, onion dice here, that we are going to add here to the mirepoix. Okay, I could chop a little more onion, but for the purpose of the demonstration, to let you know what is the word mirepoix, it will be all the time a combination of those three vegetables. Now, there is a, a white mirepoix that people use. They use, uh, see the carrot, they use the parnips, and they will use the white of the celery. This is in the middle of the, the bunch of celery, and then of course the onion, then you have like a, a white mirepoix, so it depends on what you're making with it. Now, we are going to do a julienne of uh, celery. Now, I don't want to have too much of a long, a long stem because it's very difficult to, to, to handle, um, you know, and uh, that would be a julienne, a stick julienne batonnet. Um, I want to make uh, maybe a smaller one then I keep here, I trim, and the thinner you're doing it, this will be used for maybe uh, the finished part in the soup or so. Uh, these are very skinny batonnets, right? And then um, also uh, the brunoise. The brunoise is actually um, a julienne of a vegetable like this. It could be carrot. That I'm going to cut tiny, 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 tiny little bit. Very small, very small. I use that sometimes to make a, a, like a, a, a sauce, um, the Italian sauce called the bolognese. See, this is a Julian. Now, um, I want to show you a different way about doing a slice of Julian carrot with the carrot instead of doing like a I'll show you with a potato before. I want to show you a different way that is much easier. Okay. Then I will uh, slice the carrot like this in bias. Okay. Okay, to keep going, um, I was cutting the, cap, the carrot in bias, and I am going to make a, a julienne here with the carrot. This is another way to do the julienne instead of uh, dealing with the instability of the, of the carrot because it's round. I slice the carrot in bias and I cut it really, really thin like this. So it could be where julienne can be very, very small. You know, that's pretty good. Now, uh, another cut that uh, I didn't show you yet that we do with the celery is actually the oriental cut that uh, is used for stir fry and also to make like a Chinese, Chinese salad. Then, this is a little different for me to hold my, my knife over here because uh, the vegetable doesn't go straight into the blade. It goes in bias like this, an angle. Then. I'm going to move my knife as I go along, like this. See, all the way to the end. And this I will put over here. You have to see how it show. Okay. That will be the oriental cut. Uh, I can do pretty much 
the same thing with the with the carrot really I can cut in, in the bias huh? okay um, I will cut the carrot maybe in a half like this and that would be all the time for our garnish if you were going to do a chicken campao or some kind of uh, Chinese dish you may want to use this kind of cut very thin too there yeah, I'm going to start this way in bias they're yeah, always very thin because when you do stir fry it cooks very 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 fast then uh, we don't want to wait for the vegetable to be cooked of course everything is crispy um, pretty much uh, the only thing I want to show you are still the brunoise, the carotte brunoise, like uh, the celery over here. Uh, all right, and of course, uh, you, can do, uh, you can do a tiny little mirepoix uh, that I, I use all the time when I do bolognese sauce, like I said before. See all this here, it's so delicate. Uh, when I used to make a, a consomme, that was a garnish that was going into the consomme and floating into the, the soup. Anyway, that was it for the, the special cut. Okay, in that particular session, we are going to chop um, a chalot. Chalot is a small onion. We use the chalots in the cooking for making sauce. It's very delicate, doesn't have a very strong flavor like the onions, but we use a lot in the sauce to the point where we need to chop it really fine. Uh, in this way, it disappears in the sauce and it's a complement to the flavor. Uh, some of the chefs, when they do a sauce, they strain the sauce at the end of the making, uh, of the preparation, uh, which make a, a very nice refined sauce as regarding the aesthetic and the look of it, but I like to have the shallot in there and give it more flavor. Okay? Then, like an onions, we uh, we do the same thing uh, like before. It should be much easier. We chop all the way down to the board and not all the way to the end. See, like I showed before. Then, uh, I will cut more slice horizontally and more slice you can do, better the final product will be. Then, right now, I need to really control the cut very slow to make sure I get an accurate size. All right, very simple like this. And of course, having a good knife helps a lot because the shallots, even they are small type of onions, they will make you cry. And if your knife is not sharp, making a slick cut into the product, you will can squeeze out a lot of, like a small amount of droplets in the air that will um, are charged with some kind of acid and will get into your eyes and make your eyes cry. Then, I chop a little bit more because uh, this is what uh, I like to do because I don't think in one shot I can get really as fine as I want. But you can realize that uh, you need to spend the time on it, okay? And that is called minced or diced. Then, that's for the shallots. As I showed you before, I like to use a, a scraper to handle all these little pieces here. Now, I'm going to take my, my rugs over here, clean the table, and then uh, for the garlic, I want to use the little knife because it's a smaller item. Then, I can do the same thing right here. Then I can start with a, with a small knife, this way. And 
and um, it's for instance I am not really satisfied with the, with the result I can still go back to my chef knife and minced a little smaller and finer and you know we use a lot of garlic in cooking then uh, you need to get uh, all the time in your refrigerator maybe a container of chopped garlic that helps a lot when you start to cook in this way you don't spend your time just uh, on the garlic like this okay very good that uh, is about the garlic and the shallots for the mincing all right to go to a different uh, vegetable cat now called chiffonade the word chiffonade comes from the word chiffon, which means very soft, very, uh, what do you say, bouncing. Now, I have some uh, spinach leaves here to show you um, what is the way to properly do the chiffonade. I am putting all the, the leaves together. Of course, it could apply to basil. And uh, the purpose to do this particular cut is uh, for instance uh, here i put all the leaves together and i keep them all together like a cigar and i am going to use my knife you can see the motion i'm going to use here i'm going to use uh, this kind of motion you see forward like this very very thin um, when you do this cut you need to think about the thickness of your hair and uh, if you can uh, focus on that particular size then you will be able to do a very good job, you know. Um, it has to be kind of soft, bouncy. Uh, and uh, what he does, he adds some, some volume, you see here, yes, okay. Now, uh, we use a chiffonade to put in the bottom of a, of a bowl if you are doing like a shrimp cocktail. Of course, uh, the spinach is just a, uh, a way to show you uh, the, 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 the skill over here, but you can use a bezel, uh, also a Benjamin dive, any kind of lettuce. Uh, basically, uh, with a bezel, it could be used for the caprese salad when you finish on the top, just for decoration. Also, is a decorative item. So, you know? See how fluffy it is, okay? All right, that would be our chiffonade right now. We are going to go now to use a mushroom, white mushroom. When you buy the mushroom in the store, you have to buy the mushroom that are not open here because that's a sign of being a few days, I mean, one week or so. Then make sure your mushroom is all white, see? And then you don't have to wash it, you just uh, brush it or wipe it like this. And uh, we use the whole stem, okay? I'm going to cut just a little bit to the end part here but we can use the whole mushroom to, to slice. Now, if you can hold the whole mushroom together like this, we can do just this way. Now, I didn't do a good job, but I'm going to show you now by using the motion like I showed you before, how much better it is, but also, you can do it with a little knife like this. It goes faster too. You have to make noise. If you don't make noise, you are not cutting through the mushroom. See? Now I can, I can watch you. You can look at me in my eyes and I can cut the mushroom without to cut my finger because I have this finger that is a guide for the blade and I know exactly where it is. Uh, I don't try to show off, but this is how it should be. Then here we have the slice, the mushroom, and then I am going to show you how we do julienne. Julienne would be more like a, the type of slice this way. Okay, like this. And you say, what do we do julienne mushroom? Well, julienne mushroom can be used uh, uh, sauté for, for a pasta, as a garnish for a fish, saute with lemon and, and butter, you know, we, we can just do that. All right. All right, then, yeah, we have a julienne. 
of mushroom. Anyway, that was for the mushroom so far. Continuation of the chef, uh, <clears throat> the chef knife and skill to cut vegetable. Now, many of you have maybe some uh, question about how to deal with bell pepper. I'm going to show you two ways to deal with bell pepper. It's all about what you do. The first, the first uh, part I like to do is to remove the top here <clears throat> because we are about saving, uh, you know bell pepper not to cut this way remove it this is a lot of bell pepper right here then after that i will slice it in half and then i will take my paring knife and i will re remove the inside ribs okay like this Then your bell pepper here is ready for julienne and uh, making julienne and after the julienne you can make dice. For instance, I use that for my, my paella or making the crab cake. Okay. I remove all the seeds. Alright. That's... Uh, now the second, the second way is, is to take a, in a way if my knife is very sharp I can do that, but I can take this one here, I can about, cut along the ribs, this way, and actually uh, at this point I don't want to, to waste any of the bell pepper. I will take the knife and do like the other one. Sometimes you come in a square like this, pretty good. This other thing is very complicated. It's like I said before, it's all depends on what you need to do. Some people, they don't want to cut the bell pepper this way. They just cut slice. These are the slices you can put on the pizza, for instance, if you're making a pizza, you know? That's really pretty much the idea with the bell pepper. Now, I like to use, uh, when I cut the bell pepper, I like to use the serrated knife because it has a better grab on the skin, see what I mean? And I know I can cut all this on the way then. I am going to be cutting this one for a further dish that uh, will make a demonstration called the ratatouille. That's about the size I'm going to cut my green bell pepper, okay? All right, here we go. We are going to make an application of the knife cut, the knife skill and the cast we have done into this next dish called ratatouille. Ratatouille is a, is a vegetable uh, stew that we do in the south of France and uh, what um, the components are, uh, an eggplant, zucchini, bell pepper, two types, tomato, onion, garlic, uh, pretty much the, the use of the ratatouille can be served cold as, as a salad. It could be served hot as a side dish. It could be part of uh, pasta. Uh, also, you cook a chicken. It can be on the bed, on the plates, the chicken on the top, or fish. Um, it has a many differ different use. Um, here, for this particular proportion, uh, of having one of each, if I was going to use that as a side dish, I would say this is for about maybe between four and five people, you know. Uh, that pretty much uh, all the ingredients that we are going to use as we are in the vegetable. Okay, we are making the ratatouille. And like I said, the ratatouille is a sort of French dish. And we need to have all the vegetables cut in dice. Cut in dice. Here for the particular dish, 
I don't really need to cut the onion very fine. Just at the time, they will be all separate from the each one, each other. Okay, all right, there's, there you go. All right, there, that will be my first vegetable, the onions. And next to the onions, I'm going to cut the, the bell pepper because the, the bell pepper and the onions, they, they cook in the same, in the same way. Then here, I'm going to make those, those big sticks. And I'm going to use this knife here to make all the dice very fast. Then I have the red bell pepper. Then I need to have the green bell pepper. Right. Same way. The dye should be pretty much consistent because uh, if they are not, we are we are going to overcook or undercook. The next vegetable is the zucchini. Zucchini. I will cut it in about. Uh, Way I have zucchini cook really fast. Okay, uh, try to be consistent on the size. Okay, this is one zucchini. Now for the eggplant, um, I remove the top here. I go under. Remove the, the end part. Okay. Then I like to remove uh, a part of the, the peel. One time yes, one time no. Because sometimes that peel is very, is very hard and tough under the tooth. And then uh, I will take uh, my knife over here. And uh, set up stabilization like this. Then I will cut like batonet, big batonet. Now remember the eggplant shrink a lot. It absorb a lot of, of the oil when you saute it. Okay. So remove. Too long to do that. Okay. Then let's deal with the tomato. The tomato, I like to pour the stem over here, the stem part, and uh, I don't have to remove the seeds, I am just going to cut in, in stick like this, and cut in dice, because eventually the tomato is going to melt into the ratatouille, that's about the size I'm looking for, and then after that I will have the minced garlic, chop, really fine, and uh, we will be ready to start that ratatouille. Okay? There we go. Then here are all our vegetables. There we go. And of course, like I said, the garlic, that will be short. Now we are, we are cooking the, the ratatouille. We, we uh, separate all the vegetables and we cook them all the way until they get a nice brown color and they become a little soft. The zucchini cook a little faster and here I have the, the onions and the bell pepper together. Okay, then the longest one to cook would be the, the eggplant. They absorb a lot of oil. The oil I use is a mixture of olive oil and canola because if I only use uh, the olive oil, then it will burn. 
Uh, and then it's very expensive. I prefer to use the olive oil at the end to flavor to flavor the, the ratatouille. Then uh, what goes on the ratatouille is salt, pepper, and I have got a Provencal herb over here. And I flavor the, the stew like this. And then after that, right here, when the eggplants are sauteed, I am going to put them in the tray about that much here, okay? And then uh, at this point, uh, my my onions and my bell pepper are almost ready. The, the zucchini are done. See, I don't want to overcook them. I will remove the oil right here. And then finally, right here when my tomato, I mean my, my bell pepper onions are done, I'm going to add tomato right here to finish and cook the tomato and add some garlic. I will put a little more salt. And um, the part that is interesting, when I am done, I will put all those vegetables together and I will bake them in the oven, cook them in the oven for about at least 15 minutes to exchange all the flavor. That looks to me very nice, nice coloration, not burning, okay? And then, uh, I have to put the first dab all together right now to exchange flavor. Of course, I am in a professional kitchen. I have a many, many pan, but what you can do, of course, one by one, you can do the vegetable. It takes a little longer, but at the end of the day, uh, you will be doing a, a good job. One by one. See the nice colorful here. Then I am going to put that in my oven for about uh, 15 to 20 minutes and that's it. After 15 minutes in the oven at 375, this is the end result according to the size of the recipe that we described earlier. And to recap what we have done, we have sauteed in half olive oil and canola oil, um, the eggplant first, then after that we do the zucchini, and then after that we do the bell pepper and the onion together, and um, when they are all, of course, color, nice color and semi-soft, then we are finally doing the tomato, because tomato we put them toward the end because they cook very fast and they fall uh, into a puree, and then we add the garlic, finally. Now, of course, we season with uh, the Provencal herbs. If you don't have a Provencal herbs, Italian herbs are fine, you see? Uh, pepper and salt, and that's it. Now, if you look at the size, the end result, after cooking that in the oven, we will say that it's about, uh, about four to five people following uh, what you decide to, to do right here. We put a little garnish on the top to make it very pretty, you know? And uh, that could be uh, on the top of a pasta, or under the chicken breast, you know. Um, I don't know, there are so many uses called salad. Some people have put feta cheese in there at the end to make it more interesting, like a Mediterranean type. Anyway, in a way, it works very well. This is an excellent dish in the summertime uh, to enjoy with a nice, gla a nice glass of rosé like we do in the south of France, but I don't have a rosé plus I don't drink.